Namo Shakamani Buddha, Namo Shakamani Buddha, Namo Shakamani Buddha. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for participating in today's program. Today, let's continue to study Hasutra. The paragraph we are going to study today is uh, longer than other paragraphs. Maybe this is the longest paragraph. Right now, allow me to read this first. Here, Shariputra, all dhammas are marked with emptiness. They are neither produced nor destroyed neither defiled nor immaculate, neither increasing nor decreasing. Therefore, in emptiness, there is, is neither form nor feeling nor perception nor mental formations nor consciousness no eye, or ear, or nose, or tongue, or body, or mind. No form, no sound, no smell, no taste, no touch, no object of mind. No realms of elements from eyes to mind consciousness. No interdependent origins and no extinction of them from ignorance to old age and death. No suffering, no origination of suffering, no, extin uh, no extinction of suffering, no path, no understanding, no attainment. This is a long paragraph, and also it, it includes so many teachings of a Buddha. And if we study Buddhism, I think basically uh, uh, many of us, or we already uh, uh, hear those dharmas, yeah. the dharma of uh, five skandhas. The Dharma of uh, uh, 12, uh, sense base. Also, uh, the Dharma of uh, 18 realms, okay. or the Dharma of 12 originations, including Four Noble Truths. So, within this paragraph, why uh, Buddha asked us? to understand this par paragraph by mentioning those Dharma talks, Dharma contents. Okay. This is uh, what we wanted to study. Because this paragraph is long, so I'm not going to repeat uh, uh, this reading again. Let's go ahead and uh, study the contents. First, in this paragraph, it says, All dharmas are marked with emptiness. All dharmas are marked with emptiness. When this sentence mentioning dharmas, it does not uh, uh, limit it with the Buddha's teaching. Actually, this Dharma means everything, all phenomena, anything that you can see, you can touch, okay? you can think of. Those are Dharmas. All kinds of phenomena, all kinds of uh, objects, okay? uh, something we can see, something we cannot see, but somehow you have a bit, the uh, a kind of feeling there. There's uh, existing uh, existing phenomenon there, okay, for you to uh, contact 
we call those are dharmas. All dharmas are marked with emptiness. So it simply means the empty nature, sanyata, exists in everything uh, related with all dharmas, all phenomena. Emptiness is not separate from anything. I think this is uh, the fundamental okay, understanding of this uh, sentence. All dharmas are marked with emptiness. Nothing can separate from emptiness. Okay. But when we wanted to identify what is the emptiness, okay, then sometimes we try to find words, you know, uh, sentences, certain kind of uh, descriptions to identify something we wanted to know. Okay. But somehow, no words can be used. No words can be used. Okay. So in this paragraph, it says that they are neither produced nor destroyed, neither defiled nor immaculate, neither increasing nor decreasing. Okay. Every time when we wanted to describe something, Okay. We're going to say that something is uh, arising, something is happening, or something is, exist is existing right now, or something disappearing. We're going to use those words. Okay. And a person is born, a person uh, who is dead. We wanted to find words, concepts, to describe something that we feel it's, uh, ha it's over there. Okay. But with the, uh, the stage of emptiness, when we wanted to describe sanyata, no words can use. Uh, neither produced nor destroyed. Okay. This is a way to describe everything, but uh, for a human being. Okay. Uh, now, this is uh, Venerable Hang Yi. I am Hang Yi. Okay. When people study uh, 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 this I, uh, this person, then we wanted to know when Venerable Hang Yi was born. Okay, after, you know, some time, this person disappeared. Okay, and uh, no more existence. Okay. So sometimes we wanted to use words to describe certain kind of a phenomenon in order to recognize, but uh, we cannot use any words uh, to describe it, including arising or disappearing. Over here, it translates into these two words, produced nor destroyed. Okay. Defiled nor immaculate, good or bad. We, we always wanted to define and identify this is good, this is bad. Okay. Good and bad is not uh, going to uh, really dis describe this nature, this emptiness. Uh, because emptiness cannot be described in these two words. Okay. And, uh, Every time when we think about something good, there must be something bad. When we say something is bad, that means something is good. So it's always conditional. Okay? And for us to compare, for us to describe things around us. Let me use a few minutes to um, explain uh, these concepts. Okay? I think first, uh, I wanted to point out that because emptiness, sanyata, related with everything. So it's in equally applied on everything, all phenomena. You cannot use any words to, to describe it. 
just because this phenomenon I call this is a good or I call this a bad. No, you cannot use、uh, those words. Okay. Emptiness, sanyata, is above this kind of a comparison. Okay. And uh, so uh, we should not use any words to des- describe this nature. And also, in a reality, if we analyze the way we describe things carefully, we discover that、uh, actually, when we use certain words, certain name, to describe something, actually, it's not. Accurate, accurate. It's not always correct. Yeah. For example,、uh, how are you going to uh, uh, define or uh, uh, clearly cut? This is a birth. This is a death. Actually, we cannot. We cannot completely cut off these two phenomena into two parts. We call this birth. We call this death. Okay, and、uh, it's difficult because everything is connected with everything. Even we see the phenomena carefully, we cannot separate the phenomena phenomena from others because we wanted to describe this part with these words. So long time ago, I think in 1980s, when hospitals. They are facing Buddhist requests, and uh, uh, some Buddhists, when their relatives、uh, is dying, passing away, then、uh, they ask hospital,、uh, could they let this patient lay in bed for a few hours, let him or let her rest, do not move the body, and ice the body, and.、Uh, Uh, so let this person you know, peacefully lay in bed for a few hours. Don't move it. Don't touch it. Hospitals they、uh, curious, you know. They don't understand uh, uh, why Buddhists asking、uh, hospitals to do this. So they invited me to go to hospital, explain you know the reasons. I was in、uh, Southwest Memorial Hospital one, once. Okay, I visit different hospitals, but over here I still remember that、uh, on that day I had conversations with doctors or nurses, and they asked me the same question. So I explained reasons. I said in Buddhism, yeah,、uh, we feel it's very difficult to. Uh, uh, To say when this patient is dead, it's difficult, okay, and uh, uh, because uh, in the past, uh, uh, in the in history, we try in many ways. Sometimes we we say if there's no breath, this per- person is dead. Then we say no, that that is not enough. We have to wait. There's no no more heartbeats. Okay, there's no heartbeats. Then this person is dead. Now in the day, we have advanced okay uh, uh, equipment uh, or knowledges. Then we say there's no more brain wave. Then this person is dead. Okay, but in Buddhism, we have a very simple description about death. That means no more temperature. So, 暖是暖 means temperature. Okay, as long as this uh, body the, uh, has temperature, there must be consciousness in certain kind of con-、uh, stage.、Uh, so we wanted to wait the body completely cool, cool, cool or cold. Then we move the body.、Uh, otherwise, it's going to. Be you know、uh, able to feel all kinds of、uh, touching or moving process. We want this person died peacefully without dis disruption. Okay, so we ask、uh, hospitals 
to let this person lay in bed for a few more hours. Don't move it right away. Okay. They agreed because they do agree that even today uh, with the very advanced technologies advanced you know uh, studies yeah uh, uh, death is still a mystery it's very difficult yeah to completely understand this phenomena so every time when we use these two words birth death which part is death completely? Which part is uh, 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 birth completely? Which part is uh, death completely? We cannot cut it off. Separate these two parts together. Actually, everything is related with each other. It's not uh, able to separate, you know, yeah, from all connections. So words we always use is just for convenient, convenient. This part, oh, this is a, a baby was born, a baby is born. We call this part birth. Okay. A person who's dying, a person who's dead, okay, we call this death. It's for our convenience, but now always uh, relate with the facts. So today, uh, I remember that a uh, long time ago, uh, there uh, was a story that we always study you know, when we were young. Uh, there are blind person, uh, people. They wanted to identify the elephant. Okay. And uh, some of uh, the uh, 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 people, yeah, one uh, person who touched the elephant's ear, Oh, he said, uh, oh, elephant, just like a fan, okay, and uh, like a fan. Another person who touched uh, uh, the uh, uh, feet, uh, one feet of the elephant, oh, elephant, just like uh, a trunk, like a tree trunk. Elephant, just like a, uh, a rope, because he's holding elephant's tail. They are describing part of elephant, but it's not elephant, okay? It, it's not complete, it's not complete, okay? So today in this sutra, sanyata, the nature of emptiness, cannot be using any words to, to describe it. It's above all words, okay? No comparison. Okay, so this emptiness, okay, it's uh, neither produced nor destroyed, neither defiled nor immaculate, neither increasing nor decreasing. Okay, so this part, uh, it's a kind of a difficulty you know, to understand. And a long time ago, when a student asked his uh, teacher, teacher, what is a nirvana? Yeah. And uh, I heard that uh, when a person who understands the, the uh, uh, empty nature, he's going to uh, achieve enlightenment and attain the nirvana. What is nirvana? The teacher said, uh, nirvana is the stage, just like you drink the water. Nobody can describe how hot, how cold is this water. Except you drink this water, you are going to understand the temperature of this water. You are going to understand how cold is it, how hot is it. Okay. It's experiencing this kind of a stage, not by concepts, not conceptual understanding. No words actually can describe. Yeah. If, you know, uh, if I'm a blind person, I cannot see the sun. All of you try to describe the sun to me. I'm just guessing what is the sun. Unless I open my eyes, oh, this is the sun. This is the moon. 
So long time ago, in Zen Buddhism, okay, the uh, Dharma teachers always remind us, you know, all words, all Dharma sutras, actually just like fingers, point to, to the moon. Okay, so when you hear these kind of uh, words, you want to remember you are not stay attached to this finger. You want to uh, see beyond this fin finger. Look up, see the moon, not attached to this finger. This finger is pointing to the moon. Okay. Okay. Uh, at the same time, I wanted to uh, remind you that uh, because emptiness uh, is related with everything, so uh, we wanted to uh, develop this understanding. Because of emptiness, everything can be arising, also everything can be disappearing. Okay, so as a Buddhist, we know because of an empty nature, so we can improve us. Okay, we can purify our, uh, ourselves. But after we purify ourselves, you know, uh, 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 better and better, one day we have to abandon this concept of uh, purity in order to be free. Otherwise, you still compare your practice with uh, others. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so this is uh, not the way to liberate us. Okay. And it, today, I think, uh, let's move uh, forward and uh, complete other parts. Therefore, in emptiness, there is neither form no feelings, no perception, no mental formations, no consciousness. Okay, that means after we understand the meaning of uh, emptiness, okay, then we wanted to also understand there's no real form exist. Okay, no uh, real feelings exist, no real perceptions. They are all conditional. They all empty. Okay. Then no eye or ear or nose or tongue or body or mind, no form, no sound, no smell, no taste, no touch, no object of mind. Okay. Uh, today uh, we don't have time to explain the details, but those words I mentioned, uh, there are uh, 12 uh, 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 special description about external sense space and also internal sense space. We call this 12 sense space. Okay. If a person who practices the Dharma, Buddha asks him to contemplate on five skandhas. In order to under, uh, understand there's no real self, if this person feels it's not, uh, 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 it's not uh, in detail, it's too simple, then Buddha will say, you can contemplate all 12 sense bases. Okay? And there are six external bases and uh, uh, six internal bases. Okay? Because of this space, we feel we are here. I have eyes, I have ears, I have a nose, I have a tongue, I have a body, I have a mind. So this is I. But how can I identify I'm here, living in this world? Because I can see the things, I can hear sounds, okay? I can smell, I can taste food, okay? So, when we contemplate on all kinds of phenomena, it's in details. And by using 
those 12 sense base. Okay. If a person who feel even 12 base is not uh, 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 very uh, helpful, then Buddha will introduce uh, 18 realms, 18 elements to describe yourself, the exist exist uh, existence of yourself. Okay. Besides uh, 12 sense space, add uh, 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 more sex consciousness. Okay. And uh, those consciousness is related with eye, okay, related with uh, ear, related with uh, nose, nose consciousness, tongue consciousness, body consciousness, and mind consciousness. So plus those. Uh, we call this 18 realms or 18 elements. Put ourselves, this self, into details, more uh, elements to contemplate. They are all conditional. They can be se se separated into uh, uh, different elements in order to understand there is no real self. So there are three stages. For advanced students, five skanda is good enough. But for some, that's, that is not uh, enough. It's too simple. Then they wanted to contemplate our 12 sense base. For some, it's still not enough. They wanted to contemplate our 18 realms or 18 elements. Okay. All those sense bases okay, or elements they all conditional, they all empty. After this kind of uh, cont contemplation, they all empty. Nothing exists you know, uh, permanently. Okay. This is the understanding of this paragraph. Then finally, um, okay, there are 12 interdependent origination. Now let me just uh, introduce those uh, uh, originations to you. Um, probably many of you, uh, if you uh, have studied this 12 origination, okay, you are going to understand this 12 in interdependent origination basically to describe how the circle of birth and death uh, death is functioning. Okay, this is the circle. There are uh, twelve steps, twelve chains, chained together, twelve chains, and form this circle. And uh, we simplify this circle. We will say this birth, this death. But actually, between birth and death, there are so many chains between, in between. And uh, this is another way to contemplate our self in order to understand there's no real self because we depend on those 12 okay, uh, uh, originations. Okay. The first one is uh, uh, ignorance, then mental forces, or sometimes we, we say karma, then life continuing or consciousness, uh, then mind and uh, uh, matter. That means a baby is in mother's okay, womb and uh, waiting to, uh, uh, to born. <clears throat> and uh, uh, sense organs. This baby is developing uh, organs. Okay. Then finally contact with outside world. They accumulate feelings. After feelings, then there's desires. After desire, then, then there's attachment. After attachment, then there's existence. Then birth. Then old age and death. These are 12 interdependent originations. People ask me that uh, how to describe birth and death 
uh, this is samsara world, and who is going to reborn after death? Okay, it's a, a very profound question, and also it's a kind of uh, uh, difficult to answer. Okay, in Buddhism we say life just like torches. From this torch, there's a fire. Okay. When this torch is uh, uh, going to uh, uh, extinguished, then there's an another torch to light the lights. So there's a new torch uh, uh, existing uh, uh, over here. So there's a relationship between these two torches and uh, so many torches you know, in the future. We cannot say, say this is a one because they are separate. We cannot say they are completely separate. Actually, this torch over here existing in front of me because of this torch. So they are related with each other, just like a chain. You see the circle, it's, a, uh, it's a, uh, different from other chain. But you cannot cut the chain one by one because they all connect with each other to form this life, to say that this circle of birth and death. Okay. So today I just wanted to mention this in this uh, simple uh, words. Maybe in the future, when we have time, we can continue to study. Okay. And uh, finally, no suffering, no cause of suffering, okay? then no end of uh, suffering, no uh, path. Why Buddha say this? Because it simply means when Buddha taught us Four Noble Truth, because we human beings have sufferings, suffering just like illness, dukkha just like illness. When we have a dukkha, Buddha say this is noble truth, four noble truth. Four noble truth, this Dharma teaching just like medicine. Okay. When there's no more suffering, there's no more dukkha, why we still have to keep this, uh, this medicine? So in Diamond Sutra, Buddha all, uh, uh, remind us, when a person who wants to across this river, he's riding a boat. This boat is Dhamma boat. After he across the river, he should not carry this boat on the other shore. And it's not necessary you know, to carry the boat. This boat just like Dhamma. So in this teaching, okay, we wanted to understand that uh, when we have Dukkha, we're still facing problems. We need to study the Dhamma. After we free from suffering, free from dukkha, okay, we should detach from this medicine. Okay. And this is the teaching of a Buddha. Thank you so much. Namo Buddha, Namo Dhamma, Namo Sangha. Namo Buddha, Namo Dhamma, Namo Sangha. Namo Buddha, Namo Dhamma, Namo Sangha.